Hello guys, Moritz here, and today we are going to prepare the Raspberry Pi so that we can cool it down with a 12 volt PC fan. And for that we are going to put on some heat sinks as well as power the Raspberry Pi with a 12 volt power supply. And in the next video I will also release today, we are going to make the fan controllable and write a little piece of software so that the Raspberry Pi controls the fan according to its temperature and the hard drive temperature. We are going to start with the heat sinks and I will put this one on the CPU and the other one on the Ethernet chip which is located in the front. And on the back side there is another chip but that that one doesn't need cooling. So we will remove the double sided tape and I guess it really doesn't matter in which orientation we will put it on but I'm thinking of how we are going to put it in the case later on. So I will I will stick that on like that, so that fits nicely. And let's get the other one, focus please, yeah that's focused. Uh, that's a little bit trickier, but it's also coming off. So let's put this on the CPU itself. that that's looking great the next thing to do is to power the raspberry pi with 12 volts because this fan uses 12 volts for that we will use this dc to dc buck converter let's get it out of the package uh, let's take the scissor it's far easier there we have it so you can put in, I think, up to 38 volts on the input side and step that down to 0 to 12 volts, I think. But we will be using it to step down the 12 volts that are needed for the fan to the 5 volts that we will need for the Raspberry Pi and the hard drive. This thing is rated to up to 3 amps, so that should be plenty enough. So what we will do is solder on some connectors so we can connect some jumper cables to it for testing. And then we will set this potentiometer to a value where the output is 5 volts and the input is 12 volts. Actually I've changed my mind because I found this nice thick cable so we will be using that to solder onto the buck converter. Let's put it in here, now I'm helping hands, and get some wire of this. For that I will just use my scissor to cut it. Uh, I think that should be enough. Let's cut for both sides the same length of wire, like so, and get some of the red one for the positive side. Let's cut this also to the same length, like that, cut that one to length, that's that. There's our board, so we will strip the wires back. I stripped all the wires, now I will twist the ends a little bit. Oh, that one is a little short, but I can fix that. One second. That's a little bit too much, but we can always cut it off. So... Before we solder anything in, let's pre-tin the wires. And I will just do the other two off camera. I've pre-tinned all the wires and now we can move on to solder them onto this board. I will actually solder them on to the front side. The positive side was this right one and the negative side was the left one. So I will now solder in the first wire to the negative side. Sorry for the abrupt cut, but what essentially happened was that the SD card of the camera was full 
so the camera stopped recording and I lost a little bit of the video but what I did was solder on the four wires to the buck converter and that's that. So what we will do next is connect this jack to the input side of this converter so we can easily connect it to the power supply of the LED strip. The middle pin is plus so we will be soldering on this wire in the back here because that's the positive connection and the ground connection onto this terminal. We could also connect it to this one on the side but it doesn't matter and there's already solder on the other one. For that I will clamp this somehow in here and then check that this is the input side. That is right. So heat it up. Actually let's get some more solder on there. Like so. Actually I will get some shrink tube. Yeah that is the right size so I will cut off two pieces of that and another one. Slide those two over the two wires and then I will solder it on. That's the first connection and the other one is a little bit trickier. Now we can slide over the heat shrink and that one. Now it will get a little bit louder because I will shrink it down with my hot air gun. That should do it. There we go. Let's connect the power supply and check the output. For that I got this rather bulky 12 volt power supply which can handle up to 5 amps so this is perfect or a little bit overkill. As you can see I got my voltmeter or digital multimeter and now we will connect the output to it. For that I got these huge connectors. And now we can use our probes and screw them in on the other side so I don't have to handle those all the time. And the other one. Now let's hold that in place and I will get a fitting screwdriver so we can adjust the voltage. Over here I've got my 12 volts. Let's hope nothing blows up. And you can see we are getting a voltage of 11.5 volts. Let's see if we can decrease that to 5 volts. So I guess 5.17 volts is close enough. And now we can try to hook it up to the Raspberry Pi. For that we will need an adapter cable that we can connect to the terminal here that goes to a USB micro. I guess we could try the JST connector on the ATX Raspberry. Let's get one of those. And we will also need two of the crimping thingies. Let's free those wires and turn off this multimeter because it will start beeping obnoxiously. And then I will get in the wire. What I will do is move in the wire a little bit. And since I don't have the cramping tool, I will do it by hand. And that did not work. Let's get that right in. Also bent over the back part that you would normally cut off. But since I don't have the tool, I will just do it like so. And then I will actually put this in here and then heat it up and get some more solder on there so that is nice connected. Now we will get the negative connection.
Now we have to check the polarity of the connector itself. On this view the left side is negative and the right side is positive and if you turn it around the left side is positive and the right side is negative. I will slide the negative wire into the right side from this view. That's nice and tight. And the positive one on the other side. That's a little bit janky. Straighten it. Man, that looks really bad. I don't know if we will be able to fit this even in there without touching it to the negative side. I think I will put over some more heat shrink if I can do that. Now we should be safe to slide that in. Here you can see the connector and the wires are not touching. So let's go back to the desk and try this out. I have moved everything over to the table and I've connected the multimeter to a 5 volt pin and the ground pin on the Raspberry Pi itself and our buck converter to the ATX Raspberry and also removed the power cable that we used before. Now I will plug in our 12 volts. That was the screwdriver I was going to use for adjusting the voltage if needed. Let's turn this on. We're getting 2.3 volts even if this is turned off. So let's turn it on and see if everything works. And yeah, we are getting around 4.9 volts. So we could increase this a little bit. Yeah, 5.13 volts should be perfect. And that's all of the preparation done. In the next video, we are going to connect the fan to the Raspberry Pi and control it with a little piece of software. So I will see you then. Bye.